So, all right, uh, we are Mark and Matt, or EMMM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, this is not like fancy or I mean, graphical, just or like having some fun. Uh, I'd like to, I mean, I really, I'm really into climate change, so I'd like to use uh, some CMIP6 data. And Matt wanted to do some machine learning and see food matters. So we came up with this, so trying to use machine learning to do some predictions on uh, lar uh, fish larvae catch. Uh, we started using some tuna larvae uh, data we got from somewhere, it's I think. It's the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's the Gulf of Mexico, but I don't somewhere, know. Yeah. yeah, but the point is, it was just a trained data set, so that was the point of using that data set. Yeah, and we had uh, sea surface temperature, salinity, and sea surface height. I'm not entirely sure that we are good machine teachers, and if that really can be used to predict uh, fish, I mean, amount, or larvae, or whatever. And yeah, and we just got the same data, the same ocean data from the CMIP-6, uh, that there should be a picture of a tuna here, but whatever. <laughs> and yeah, uh, and we did this prediction for the 21st century, right? So it's 2015 to 20, uh, 2100 for SST, salinity, and SSH in, in the Gulf of Mexico, right? Yep. Is that it? So, well, this is the code. I mean, just a Jupyter notebook, loads of packages, and this is just loading the CMIP6 data from the ESGF, this is open that. And this is the larvae data. Not fun, so you. <laughs> and then we get into the machine learning thing, right? Just the plot. So they're kind of, uh, go on, go on. <laughs> so yeah, you, you wanna go that way? It's just feel free to no, jump in. The, yeah, so our idea was kind of like create a code where we could see the data from uh, our data set that we are trying to use to train and to validate and just to see if, how it looks like. So that was the first approach. Uh, and after that, so as you guys can see here, we have some peaks that uh, we kind of talked to Valentina and she was like, yeah, you guys, first of all, you guys don't have enough data set. So it's going to be really hard to catch those, to get those peaks over there. So we're like, okay. Uh, so what we did then, of course, is not the, the best approach, but what we did here, we just use a average. I really mean, right? Yeah, yeah. where we got our data and we kind of averaged out until we got something more Smoother. clear. Uh, so of course, this is like approach, I don't know, maybe someone knows something about a machine learning where they apply machine learning to predict counts of like fish larvae or something and we couldn't find anything, and the data set that we found was enough to, for us to start practicing machine learning and start using it, so that yeah, was the idea. 500, 500 samples. Yeah, over, that, yeah. Right? and Valentina was like, hey, you guys don't have enough data set. <laughs> Valentina was there, always mentioned that, and of course, we didn't have enough data set for this training, especially to get the peaks. Uh, okay, so here's the machine learning part. Uh, here we have, so pretty much what we're doing here, we get this, our data and we split the data. So that's what we're doing. We, so the, first of all, we get the data and then we separate the data into a salinity, SST, uh, the counts of uh, tuna and uh, SSH or zeta. Uh, and then here we split the data where we get 300 points of the data. Uh, then here actually, so since we we're having the same problem about like the parameters and what, how to, uh, which parameter, how like the numbers and stuff for the parameters, actually I found this algorithm, wasn't me uh, who did that, but this kind of calculates for the best parameters to use in your machine learning. So that's what we did here, where we, we applied, we kind of create this, range for all the features that we need. And we apply that 
uh, and, we f and we use our trained data set to see what, what is the best fit for that. Of course, we already ran because it takes a little bit long. Uh, and then we come to our machine learning training where here, actually just kind of automatized, automatized already, where it gets the values that we found, the best values we found previously, and we apply for the parameters grid, where we apply grid search using random force regressor. And using that, uh, we find our data, or we find our, this is the validation model. And we, as you can see, we actually capture the peaks, even though they are is moved out compared to the original data. Uh, and then we apply our, our, uh, our model to our uh, trained data, actually, to our validation data. And we get this kind of weird, uh, but we also can kind of capture a little bit of the peaks, not all of them, but we also can see that we can capture this bump here. So, I mean, it's good enough for 500 points. Uh, of course, this would be way better if we had over like at least 10,000 points, but we couldn't find it. So here we separate the data for the CMIP6 and we kind of just plot the data and we also smooth it out the temperature because it, it was only for two months for each year. So that's what we did. And this is the SSP 585, just as the worst case scenario. And we like zombie movies, maybe yeah. doomsday, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then we applied the same data with using the CMIP6 for salinity temperature and zeta, and we found a prediction for uh, our model actually. So yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. On my phone. So uh, yeah, so here it's like of course the y-axis are 235, and if you go to original data, it's up to 600. But as you guys can see, we kind of did a good job only with that that really small amount of data. So the plan here is like you give the data of fish larvae and right now that's what exactly what you need to do and it, it spills out for you the prediction for, uh, for the population. Of course, we need to tweak more, but that's pretty much. Uh, and source is Valentina, of course, <laughs> <laughs> and other links here. And of course, those are the next steps that we need to do, but that's it. Thank you all. Yeah. Oh, uh, because I couldn't find more data, actually. Yeah, because like, uh, like we kind of wanted to work with machine learning and uh, projections, but then we didn't know where to find the features data. So I was just like looking up for features data and that's what I found where I could also have salinity, temperature and SSH. But if someone knows a place where I could get those data with all those old, other parameters, it would be nice to test. So that's why. <laughs> yeah. We started with whales, so it was even worse. Yeah. You know? So yeah, the tuna thing was kind of nice. You know, Five hundred. Yeah. Not enough, just of embryonic stage, maybe. Yeah, so, it could become something good. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Again, might be because this is what. Except, uh, so again, like using this algorithm algorithm over here. That's where we got. Let me see. That's yes, yeah, That's yeah. the one. So that's where we got all the parameters to measure, like the best fit. Uh, of course, and when we compare, of course, it's all. Oh, Obviously, it was overfeeding over there, right? Uh, and here it comes. So we tried to use as much data as we could without having an, 
not with, uh, without not having enough data to to train the data, to validate the data set, right? To validate the model, right? So we're, we're kind of trying to find the best like situation where 500 points, how would we split that? So we kind of like, oh, let's put 300 there and we would have half of it to validate the data. So of course, there are a bunch of stuff we should need to do. First of all, to find a big data set. What and do you think, if I may? Oh, we only have three right now, but we also have latch to launch to then time. But we didn't want to mess up with that. We want to take big steps for that. Yeah, I didn't know that, so thank you. Okay, I mean, just say that uh, that one that sounds like we got some important things. We've got, we've got a lot of data, and we've got to still determine the visualization to make some fun. Maybe we can still train the training model that we have to know where and when we have a lot of data. Maybe, yeah. I mean, it's just because we only have three days and we're, we're trying to make the project feasible. So like, it was fun. Yeah. Right. Fun, of course. And 11 last night doing that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Oh, the training. This one is the training here. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, so again, like, my, I, I, mean, I have basic. been trying a lot, you know? Yeah. I did like all this, I mean, it's attempts. too much. Yeah, so, uh, it was more, yeah, no, but like, so we had this imbalance, like, what, how much would you use, and, Again, my machine learning is like only two courses that I, I took, so maybe, yeah. Actually, I told him, you know, use everything to train and then predict, you know? <laughs> Just like co things, yeah. yeah right. over time, but I know, yeah, I, mean, I know nothing about But that's learning. a, so far, thank you for, for, for the chip. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that for sure then. But yeah. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you.